I think the better thing for me to do uh, that guarantee to provide the more fresh examples of free body diagram is our old worksheet. So this is something that we used to use back when we had an in-person class. You can kind of see from the dates how old these are. And uh, there are some examples here that I haven't done the exact versions of um, on the recorded video. So, so let me do that. I think uh, that's good to do. Um, so, so, you know, I'm not going to do all the problems because if I do it that way, basically 15 minutes is, is enough to do this. <laughs> uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the setup and I'll draw free body diagram, which is the very first thing that we do for each one of these. So let me take this skateboarder on an inclined plane. And hey, let me go draw free body diagram. <laughs> Uh, let me do that here. I think I must have done inclined plane at some point somewhere, but uh, um, again, there can't be too many examples of free body diagram. And this particular example is a, a classic one, one that you will see in many different scenarios. So one more example, I think it's good to have. So if you are searching for the examples on your own, what you would be looking for is something like a mass on inclined plane. I'm sure I've actually done one like this before, just not saying that it's a skateboarder. <laughs> so let me draw a free body diagram. And when you draw a free body diagram, it's uh, important to kind of keep in mind what objects you are interested in and what objects you are not interested in. So here, uh, this uh, ramp, it's not part of my system. I, I don't really care what happens to the ramp. So. Uh, I'm not going to draw anything that relates to the ramp. Uh, really, the only object that I'm interested in is the skateboarder. So it's the forces on this skateboarder of mass M that I'm going to um, pay attention to and draw uh, uh, draw free body diagram for. So let me do that. I'm going to draw the forces on the skateboarder of mass M. So as you're looking at this situation and uh, thinking about the forces, if you need a place to start, what I would recommend is gravity. There's always gravity, mg. And uh, that gives you a starting point to, to kind of compare to what your free body diagram is apparently saying. The skateboarder is accelerating downward. And what you know from your own intuition about this setup how the skateboarder is actually accelerating. The skateboarder is accelerating uh, along the slope uh, this way, not directly downward. So this can't possibly be right. There must be an additional force. And this is the kind of setup where it takes a little bit of more time and effort to kind of think of that additional force because if you're just to reflexively drawing this, that's not right. That force will only give you up or down acceleration or zero net acceleration, zero acceleration. And that, that's not what you're looking for. You are looking for this acceleration along the slope. So uh, this is where the types of force I, the types of force lecture that I gave is useful because it's uh, meant to be a comprehensive list of forces that you will see. Uh, and I guess the kind of the summarized abbreviated version, what it comes down to is you have one non-contact force, which is gravity. I've already drawn it. And all the other forces that you might bring up, normal force, friction force, tension, uh, spring force, apply the force, whatever, they all amount to contact force. So in, for the remaining forces, whatever that is on the skateboarder, you should be able to trace the source, origin, um, type of the force uh, by looking at what's touching the skateboarder. And there aren't that many. I, I guess there's air touching the skateboarder, but uh, if you haven't heard me say this before, we're going to ignore air resistance almost every single time. Whenever we can, we will ignore it. So we'll try to ignore it here. Um, so ignoring air, uh, what else is touching the skateboarder? I think uh, I see this surface of contact. So, so that's what I'm going to focus on. 
the additional forces that we have, it's going to be coming from this surface of contact. And at each surface of contact, you potentially have two forces. You might have a normal force that's a perpendicular or normal to the surface, and you might have a friction force, which is going to be tangent to the surface in the opposite direction to the uh, the kind of the direction in which surfaces slide, the role of friction is to reduce that sliding. So as you look at these two forces, I, I hope you see that drawing friction force won't really help you because it's going in opposite direction from acceleration. Um, um, and I guess if somehow if you wanted to draw this friction force, that would have been, it could still have downward acceleration. It just uh, has to have upward velocity, and that's not really the situation I was looking for. So, um, so friction force doesn't really do anything. And I think if uh, somehow the question tells us to consider friction, then we will include it back in. But uh, until I see that, I'm going to ignore friction, like air resistance. Uh, until I don't, until I can't, I'm going to ignore friction. So the only thing that's remaining is the normal force. And you know, I'm just going to try to copy this over here. So normal force in this direction. And sometimes I do draw auxiliary figures just so that I have a clear sense of uh, angles like this that's represented in the other diagram. I do try my best to make sure any auxiliary figures are distinguishable from forces. Uh, one easy way to do that, one common standard way to do that is make sure your force arrows, force vectors, always originate from your object. And any other decorations I might draw, like acceleration, they're kind of off so, so that I don't confuse them with the forces. Um, so, okay, I guess uh, from this diagram, depending on your experience with it, it might not be super clear that this is the correct direction of acceleration. One way you can see that, which is part of your standard step, a standard strategy step, is to define coordinate axis. And you can kind of see once you define your coordinate axis, you do, with the y axis being along the normal force, then you should be able to see that you can, oh, break down a gravitational force into the y direction and into the x direction. And it's the x direction that gives you the acceleration down the slope, and the y component is just going to balance out the normal force. So, so as all those are, you know, steps two and three of the standard strategy. In terms of the drawing free body diagram, you are all done when you are at this step here, having drawn the two forces, and kind of seen visually that you could um, imagine getting the correct direction of acceleration from these two forces that are illustrated here. Okay, um, that's that example. Let me see if I can do a few more examples. Um, let's see. Do I want to do this additional plane with the additional, or incline the plane with the additional forces? Um, yeah, you know, let me do that. I think, uh, I can do this as a modification of the first example I've done, because they are telling you additional things that you now have to take into account. That could be challenging. Um, so, so let me do this. I'm gonna copy over the figure here, but I'm not actually gonna draw on this figure. I'll just uh, uh, further decorate my uh, skateboarder and the diagram that I've already drawn. So um, this is for a situation where the question tells you additional uh, forces to consider. It just comes out and tells you, oh, there are these other forces that we didn't <laughs> tell you about before. So I think we should be able to keep most of what we've done before with the simplest setup for the skateboarder sliding down on inclined plane. And what we have to take into account are these additional forces that they're going to tell us about. And uh, it looks like I've already drawn one of the auxiliary figures that I'll want, kind of the direction reference for the uh, plane. I already have that. So the direction of the wind is going to be, let me try to draw it correctly. Uh, 
this is going to be forced due to wind and that angle phi here that should be congruent to this angle phi i think and kind of imagining this geometric thing um, there uh, forget the names for it but these two should be the same angle so that's my angle phi there okay once you've made that modification uh, surprisingly few things change um, so in terms of you know free body diagram you drew that additional arrow and you're still done. It might kind of surprise you, you know, if your acceleration is still downward um, here, then it may surprise you that there are more changes. Like, don't I have to do something with the normal force? Don't I have to do something with the gravity? Well, not with the gravity, you know, gravity, it's always there. It's always mg, like it's not gonna change. Now, with the normal force, if your sense was that it should change, um, yeah, it does. In fact, if you draw the components of your gravitational and you are now apply the force from wind, then yeah, you do have this additional Y component of the force from the wind. So your normal force will have to increase to kind of compensate that and the net force along the Y direction is zero. You're going to have to make the modification. Uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is that you don't really have to indicate in the diagram. So the length of the arrows, they're kind of rough length only. Um, the actual magnitudes, you're going to determine that with math, with algebra. So, so your diagram, which identifies your forces and their directions, doesn't really change. And the second thing that will change is you can kind of see with this X component of the wind force that your acceleration will change because your net force will be less. And in fact, you can even imagine how if your wind force is great enough, uh, the skateboarder might be pushed up the slope, which I hope uh, kind of matches with your intuition. Uh, in terms of free body diagram, I just drew this additional wind force and kind of double checked that there weren't any other forces that whose uh, like qualitative features need to change. And yeah, that, that's good. Um, that's <laughs> the role of free body diagram. It identifies all the forces and identifies their direction so that as we write down, uh, go through our standard step, go through our standard strategy steps and write down our equations, we have a guide to look at. Okay, I think I have enough time for one more diagram. Let's uh, try to pick a fun example and do that. Um, let's see. This I have done. There's video on the page I'm getting this from. Um, I feel like I've done a lot of this. Um, Um, oh, let's do this one. I don't think I've done uh, this question in, um, uh, this is a fun question. I don't know if there's a similar question like this in your homework, um, in case there isn't. I would encourage you to you know, uh, give this a try. It's a, so you can see the question in the worksheet. It's describing a setup with a, a book of some mass being held against the wall. And it's in the following sense strategy, um, calculate magnetism force, and there's some calculus thing you can do. Wait, is it calculus thing? I don't think it has to be a calculus thing. There's some parameter um, adjustment thing that you can do with angle. So I won't go through all that. I have two minutes remaining, not enough time. But it is enough time for me to draw the free body diagram and convince you that it is correct a free body diagram. So uh, let me just uh, put a note in, just uh, saying this is held stationary. And in this case, what the importance of that is, the acceleration of the book is zero. That's really the main thing I'm going for. Uh, I mean, it could be sliding at a constant speed, but let's not complicate it. Um, so I have... Um, so let's draw free body diagram. And I'm interested in only the book. So I'm going to draw a diagram of the book. I'm going to ignore the forces on the hand or the forces on the wall. I'm just going to consider the book. Now, there are forces on the book by hand. There are forces on the book by the wall. 
I'll draw those, but I'm not going to do anything else. So, um, so it's a book of MSN. Um, as we're starting, I ask myself the same question. <laughs> have I drawn all the forces? And when you have nothing here, it's kind of hard. So I'm going to start out with one force. Okay, there's always gravity. So there's going to be gravity, downward, mg. And as I ask myself, have I drawn all the forces? Okay, this doesn't look right. With this, it should be accelerating upward at, not upward, sorry, accelerating downward at G. And uh, that's not the situation I have here. I want the book not to accelerate. So, um, so which is where I remember, oh, they told me about this applied force. So let's draw an applied force. And I ask myself the same question each time. Did I draw all the forces? And I hope as you look at this diagram um, that you have enough uh, com intuition to kind of get comfortable with the idea that this applied the force could be just enough to balance a this gravitational force. So in the vertical direction, you can make acceleration equal to zero. Now, the trouble I have is that once you have enough applied force to do that, then uh, you're stuck with this component of the applied force. So uh, I need more forces. <laughs> Where are my forces coming from so that I can balance them all out and have net force of zero or acceleration of zero? And uh, I hope as you look at the wall, you remember the two types of contact forces, normal force and friction force. And with the normal force, uh, yeah, then uh, the normal force will balance out uh, this component of applied force. So let me draw that normal force from the wall. Now, if you are used to seeing the normal force perfect, uh, vertical, well, normal doesn't mean vertical, it just means perpendicular. So if your surface is vertical, then your normal force will be horizontal. Um, yeah, it's just gonna be from time to time. So, okay, and here, if you're asking yourself, what is the, did I draw the forces? Could I make the acceleration equal to zero here? Then, um, yeah, I think with the three forces oriented that way, then sure, yeah, I can. And um, depending on what the question says in detail, uh, I, I would be fine just leaving it that way. Now, let me just double check the question. The question might say something like, it could be giving you what amount of force you have, and that might not be the exactly the right amount of force to balance out the gravity. In the case, you are going to need an additional force. So let's check the question. The question says, um, calculate the magnitude of force you must exert to barely hold the book stationary app. All right, so if they haven't told us this, my inclination would have been to say, all right, let's ignore friction. Now, in this question, <laughs> they did tell us something about friction, and they want the minimum amount of force. So that would lead me to think, oh, I can't leave things here. I have a feeling I'm going to get some help from friction. So I gotta include the friction in some way. Maybe it's gonna be some amount of force. I think it's gonna be static friction um, that'll help hold the book up. And I'm drawing friction in a direction uh, tangent to the surface. Because that's gonna be the direction of friction force. I did have a choice of either upward or downward. And they both possibilities are actually valid. They both could happen. Uh, I'm just choosing the upward direction as a direction that would uh, minimize the applied force. So, um, so, you know, in this particular question, it does get a little bit more complicated. You have to introduce friction and the rest of the problem solving does involve more steps. Um, but I'll leave it here that uh, this is the correct free body diagram that includes all the forces, including, uh, let me draw an angle here so I don't forget what kind of angle is given here. <laughs> includes all the forces, including the ones that we like to normally ignore, but the question mentions it, so I can't I put it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so.
So yeah, that's another example of drawing free body diagram. There's a great deal of diversity. This is the step, as I say, this week uh, in standard strategy. That it's the step that takes the most creativity, most time, most care. Because uh, there are especially more complicated examples like this one. Uh, there are many ways that can you can forget things, you can uh, throw forces wrong. So it, it's the one that I really recommend that, uh, that you practice the most. The rest of the standard strategy, once you go through those steps a few times, it becomes mechanical. It's the free body diagram drawing step that uh, even for me never becomes mechanical. I need to pay attention. I need to read the question <laughs> to make sure that I don't draw wrong free body diagram. So 